Welcome to Grumpy Man's Reviews. Today we're looking at this Sunscore 1080p 2 megapixel wireless security system. I have also reviewed other Sunscore security systems and other security cameras. I will leave a link in the description box below and a pop-up card if you want to watch them videos. If you want to pick this system up, I will link it down below. This NVR comes prepared with the cameras, so it's a plug and play system. I'll take everything out the box but before I do that, remember, if you find the video useful, a like would be appreciated. Any questions, ask me in the comment section below and subscribe to watch more reviews. This is everything that was included inside the box. I've only taken one camera out on its accessories. I've left the other three in the box for now and the three adapters in the plastic bag that they came in. Look, some paperwork, an ethernet patch cable, that's to connect the NVR, a mouse, I think you'll have some lighting around there. It's a USB one. The quality is okay because normally you get like cheap mouses with this bundle. But I'm surprised it's got some lighting in there. Well, I think it has. We'll find out when we connect it up. That's the power supply for the NVR. It's a normal barrel type. NVR box, some Sunsco brand in there. It's got some lights there for the hard disk drive, power on, IR. That's what it looks like from the bottom. These four screws are holding the hard drive. This has a 500 gigabyte hard drive pre-installed, but you can upgrade it to six terabyte. You'll need to open the screws, two screws there, two screws there that will lift pop up and then you could access the hard drive. At the back it's got two built-in antennas for Wi-Fi reception. Audio out, VGA if you want to connect it to the monitor, HD output if you want to connect it to your TV or the monitor, Ethernet port, two USBs, one's of course for the mouse and the other one is to take footage off the hard drive and power port. With each camera, you get a power supply. I think the length of this is just under three meters, a barrel type connector there, but you can get bigger extension cables for these. That's what I'll be using because of course it won't reach all around, but um, it, you will need four sockets to power these. And then of course one socket for the NVR box. An Allen key some screws and some wall plugs for mounting the camera. The Allen key is to adjust the camera. An antenna that would fit on at the back there. Some foam padding at the back there. It's got three holes, of course, where you would mount the camera. A fixed cable that splits into two. One's for power, which would fit on like that. And the other one is an ethernet port. The ethernet port is there for two reasons. First of all, if you mount the camera where there's poor Wi-Fi, you're able to mount an ethernet cable. One end would go in there, of course, on the other end to your router. And the second reason, if you need to reset the camera or if you buy a new camera that needs pairing up, you use the ethernet port then. At the back, two adjustments there. One's for moving the camera up or down. So it does have enough flexibility there. And um, that one is for twisting. It's locked at the moment, of course, but if you want to, you can adjust it from there using the Allen key provided. At the back, that's for the antenna, which we would put on now. Just screws into place. It's got a little microphone hole there because they do pick up sound, but of course you can't speak from them, but they will pick up sound. It says 200 watt there. At the top, sun guard. And again, you need the Allen key for that. You can move it forward or back. At the bottom, just some information. These are full 1080p, two megapixel bullet cameras. At the front there, the camera has 3.6 millimeter lens with 24 infrared lights, and it has a day and night sensor there as well. The cameras are metal apart from the sun guard, which is plastic, the rest, they're all metal. They are a nice size. These, they're not too big. The build quality is good on them as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set one camera up first, of course, inside, make sure they're paired and they're working. Let's set the system up. 
I'm using an HDMI cable here. It did not come with a HDMI cable or a VGA cable. So you will need to provide your own. The adapters, you could tell the slightly larger one, that's for the NVR box and the slimmer one is for the camera. Let's put this on the NVR box first. It, it will of course go to where it says DC. Next, the mouse. Any USB port it can go into. Ethernet cable. One end of course goes in here and the other end would go to the back of your router. HDMI cable would of course go into the HDMI port. Cable for the camera, as I showed before, that would go in there. All I need to do now is plug all these in, give it power, and then they should pair up within one to two minutes. Okay, I'm about to plug the adapter in for the NVR box. I'll go plug the camera in. It says warning system time reset. Press OK. There we are, it's come on. That will really quick that. By default, there's no password on this. If I right click, if I go to video manager, it's admin but no password. But I strongly suggest you do change that. Connected successfully, that's the IP address it's given. Okay. The top you could see here, the Wi-Fi strength is good, of course, because I'm still indoors yet. So I've checked that the camera's working. Here, it's letting us know that we're on the internet. This little square box here, if I click on that, it brings up two QR code, one for Android and one for iOS. This runs on the IP Pro app, the cameras, but you could view them through that. So I will be downloading the IP Pro app as well, but I just thought I'll test the camera first and then I can mount it. This is a cloud ID. You could scan this or at the bottom next to this, if I press return there, there's a number here. I've blurred it out, but that's the cloud ID. Okay, let's download the app. So I've come to Google Play, it's IP Pro, there it is at the top, it's the first one, install, you will need to create an account if it's the first time you're using it. The app has just finished, it's installed, open, allow IP Pro to access photos and media on your device, allow, tips. Okay, agree. I'm creating a new account. I'm going to register. Email a phone number. I'll put my email in. Okay, it's going to send me a code. I'll quickly do this part off camera. I've put the code in what they emailed me and I had to create a password. I've done that. Here to add new device. I click on that. After the device powered on, Scan the QR code on the device or on the monitor. So cloud ID I need to scan in. Scan code is successful. Please add camera ID. Okay. The picture is only for reference. Right, yeah, that's the camera. I've got bullet cameras anyway. Set device name. Let's call it. Sunscore. CCTV, okay, confirm. There we are, added successfully, that was really quick. I press play, there we are, it's brought the one camera up. A quick look at the app, uh, of course it could show four cameras, playback window there. No videos because, of course, there's nothing recorded at the moment. 
if I click on the playback button again, window, standard definition or HD, microphone, PTZ, of course these cameras are not PTZ, screenshot, sound and recording, if I back out of there, share, news, playback again, device, demo, me, that's my information, we've got system message, settings, work, mobile, preview, push notification, log out, screenshot on recordings, they would be saved in here, system and different settings there, device, back to the app, it's time to install the camera, I've got all my equipment, the hardest part of this system, A, knowing where to install them and B, the actual drilling part, I'm not going to do the drilling part, luckily for me my brother's going to do it because if I do the drilling part, I'll most likely get it wrong and the cameras will probably fall off, but this is what we need. So I've got the adjustment key because adjust the camera where you want to put it. Obviously my drill's in there. I've got the screws and plugs, but where we are installing it, we don't need the plugs. If you install the cameras into a wall, then you will need the plugs. So the Allen key, I've adjusted them. And I've opened the app. So I'm going to use the app to see which place is best suited to install this camera. As you can see, if you can, have I got that in the right place? Yeah, so if you see there, I'm moving it around now. And what's really impressive about this camera, the lag, if you, if I put my hand there, you can see, maybe about a second, that's it, they're really quick. Earlier on when I first showed you the cameras, and I said that's for adjusting and that's for adjusting, but the back bit is not for adjusting, I got that wrong. That's to remove this part, so you'd undo that with the Allen key and undo that. And as you can see there, it's removed because the drill would not reach, otherwise it would not get in there because this was coming in the way. So we've had to remove this. Now we could drill that onto wood or wall if you were going to install them on the wall and then you'd re-put them back in there and then tighten them. But do be careful because these are really small, so you don't want to lose them. And again, you don't want to lose the Allen key because these size of Allen keys are hard to come by. Okay, so we've removed them. We're going to drill this bit on first and then I'll show you the next step. We've mounted the base, we had to use our own screws because the screws provided wasn't that good. So we've mounted that and now we're going to assemble this back. We've mounted the camera, you see the cables running down. And the camera does have a lot of flexibility because you can move it up or down or you can twist them as well. So a different angle. Okay, let's go have a look at the image on the monitor now, then we'll run through some of the settings. Let's have a quick look at the NVR. As you can see, I've only got one camera at the moment. I right click now, screen split, video manager. If I right click again, system setup. So first tab is general setup, so English, and it's 1080p, 50 hertz, because of course I'm in the UK. Then you have auto, logout, key buzzer, different settings here as well. There here it is, show cloud ID when preview. The box had a tick in it, but I unticked that. And then show time when preview, that's still enabled. And you'd press apply and okay. Time setup, hard disk drive setup. This comes with a 500 gigabyte. As I mentioned before, you can upgrade it to a six terabyte one. It takes the normal 3.5 inch this has been formatted, but you could format it as well. Edit setup. Alarm icon is checked and buzzer, apply your okay case stuff again. Let's move over to record. So record plan. So here, if I left click, hold it down, drag it. Sorry, if I go to motion, left click, hold it down, it will turn green. So that's the time and date when the motion I want it to kick in. 
an alarm channel setup. Then here on the left hand side, encode setup, bit rate and stuff. And the frame rate is 15 frames per second. You can't change that. The bit rate you can't change as well. Resolution, that's the highest one. Chord mode, AV stream video, and substream. When you view the footage on your mobile, it will be as that because of course it's a lower quality. But this will be 15 frames per second. Then channel OSD, color adjustment, cam one, all channels. It's letting us know what the symbols mean, like excellent, good, bad, and disconnected. So here, if you were to copy, just say you copied the motion, if you set motion for camera one, then rather than going in and setting them for each camera, you could just copy the motion for the other three cameras as well. But I've only connected one camera so far, so it's not showing that option, but that's what that is. Video detection, so motion detection, sensitivity, high, medium, whatever, alarm duration, and enable PIR and stuff, buzzer, email, set all that up. System log, if anything goes wrong with the system, it will let you know in here. Right click, video playback. This is where you could look at all the footage and you could go by date and time. So just move this over to there. That's why we were messing about with the outside. This is where we mounted the camera outside. I don't know how well it'll come up on the camera, but the quality is quite good. Exit out of there. If I right click, video backup. So th this is where you'd connect your USB and back the footage up. So if you want to take any footage off the hard disk drive, and you could choose the options as well. When motion will trigger doing that footage or what, so just put the USB in at the back and let you know. AVI, ah, okay. So. Now, the quality that I'm going to see is going to be slightly better than the one you guys are going to see when I show you the test footage because it's going to be AVI format. And Windows won't play that. So I do have VLC, so I can look at the footage back myself. But to put it onto YouTube, I'll have to uh, encode it through Handbrake so it lose a bit of quality because I'm going to encode it into normal MP4 so I can upload it to YouTube. So you will see a slight quality difference. And back up and cancel. By the way, the mouse does have a red light in it. Earlier on when I showed you and I said, I think it, how a light in it, it does, it has a red light. Okay, let's have a look at some daytime and nighttime footage now. And it will be from this one camera because at the moment I don't know exactly where I'm going to mount the rest of the cameras. So while I figured that out, I thought let's get this out if anyone's interested in picking the system up. I'll link it down below because it is at a reasonable price. There you go, that was the Sansco Wi-Fi CCTV system. For the price, this is a decent kit. Image quality is good, but one thing to point out, every camera needs some lighting around it, and these are two megapixel. They're not the best I've seen. However, if you want something simple at a reasonable price, you can't go wrong with these. It's just plug and play, really easy to use. Motion detection works really well. Link in the description. Hope the video has helped someone. If it did, a like would be appreciated. Subscribe to watch more reviews. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.